Hey there, I want to express concentration of solutions as mole fractions, molarity, molarity and parts per million in this session. What's the point of this? You may have some idea already because all of these terms on top, they have something to do with moles and moles count number of particles just like a dozen but bigger, significantly bigger. You know that a mole is this number right here, right? 6.0221 into 10 power 23. You probably learned about this. And where is this useful? Well, if you have reactions happening in the lab that looks like this, you've got a base and an acid reactant to give you salt and water. To be able to calculate the amount of stuff used up or the amount of stuff formed, this is really useful. Because essentially, number of particles, they take part in a reaction. And you can convert that to masses as well. This is extremely useful there. All right, let's talk about the first easiest one, mole fraction. Say I have just two things combining, A and B, a mixture. No reaction happening, just a mixture. So, mole fraction would be defined as, let's talk about the first substance, A. Moles of A divided by total moles. And since it's just a binary mixture, this has two things. It's simply going to be summing up moles of A plus moles of B. Where is this useful? Let's do a quick recall. Gases, moles are proportional to volume here. You remember that? Well, when you keep pressure and temperature constant, this happens and this is known as Avogadro's law. This is a very useful thing when you are dealing with concentrations of terms where you have just gases in the mix. You'll see those applications soon in later videos. So, if I were to just define this, it would be moles of a substance divided by total moles of components. Components? Or didn't I just add two things? Well, I can have more than two things. In most of our discussions, we're only going to talk about two things. So, I can write this mole fraction just by this symbol X. And since I'm talking about component A, that's why this is here. So, it's moles of A divided by total moles. And remember, if there's two things, let's we'll call it a binary mixture. Now, what if I add XA and say XB as well? If I add them, what do I get? Well, I would be putting NB here. I'm writing right in the middle of the screen. Divided by NA plus NB again. Look at that. Everything just cancels out. And what you get is XA plus XB is 1. It's kind of obvious, but it's a good thing to note. Okay. Well, this was a binary mixture. What if I have a lot of things? Not just two things, five things, ten things, I things. If I have I components, then also I can calculate this. XI would simply be given by NI divided by the total moles of everything that's there. And in that case, x1 plus x2 is not going to be equal to 1. It's going to be x1 plus x2 plus all of these different mole fractions will still add up to be 1 because it's just a fraction. I know this is getting a little theoretical, but this is very useful in questions and numericals. Now let's go on to something that you're probably going to use a lot more often in actual labs whenever you're doing anything to do with, uh, you know, any solutions mixing and reactions specifically. So molarity and molality, <laughs> they differ just by one letter. You've got an L over here and R over here. But there's a big difference. We'll talk about that. Let me write down the symbols first. S capital M for molarity and small m for molality with the L. The definitions, be careful here. Moles of solute in one liter of solution. That's what molarity means. If I give you a number, I say this is x molar. I'm saying it's got x moles of solute in one liter of solution. Similarly, molality also has moles of solute in the numerator, but the denominator is different. Denominator says one kilogram of solvent. Examples, 0.6 and 0 0.05. And you see that I've written capital M here, which denotes molarity with the R, and small m is molality with the M. So this means I've got 0 0.05 moles in one kilogram of solvent. Now, what solution, what solvent? You already know this, but obviously, solution is made up of the solute and the sol uh, the solute and the solvent mixed together, right? That's one key difference, right? The solution and solvent. And on the left, you've got volume. And on the right, you've got mass. And this is the coolest thing. This right here, I'm going to put a nice check next to it, is unaffected by temperature change, which is what makes it it stands out and we're going to use this in many different things where we go and try out if something happens when you boil things 
Yeah, keep it in mind. So if temperature changes, molality is a much better term to use than molality. Why? Well, if you've got a liquid and you heat it up, its volume changes. So this term goes out of the window. Anyway, that was it about these two things. So if I were to generalize this, let's say the denominator should change to volume of solution in liters over here in this case and in, on the right hand side it becomes mass of solvent in kilograms right because you may not always have these perfect things when you're trying to mix say six grams of solute that has a mass of 60 gram per mole you're mixing all of that in 10 gram of say water wow what do i do with this now what do i do with this well you can convert this 10 gram then just becomes divide that by thousand gram per kg and now you've converted everything into the units that you need. See, gram, gram gets cancelled out, gram, gram gets cancelled out, kilogram solvent goes over here, mole of solute goes on top. If this seems quick to you, try some of the questions that are in your textbook and you'll see that there's a lot of unit conversion that happens. But this video is focusing on introducing these terms, so I'm going to stop here on this. Also, some simple things, you may hear something called a decimeter and that's the same as one liter. Okay, last one. And this one's very interesting. It's a little bit tricky. That's why I left it to the end. Parts per million. Million is a really big number, right? So I'm talking about a part in a million parts. It's like a needle in a haystack. So it's a very, very small quantity. Okay? We're talking about trace amounts most of the time. So I'm going to write down a definition. See if it makes sense to you. So if I talk about grams, I can define this as the solute mass in grams in a million grams of solution. Wow, that's a really large quantity of solution. Hmm, okay. But why grams? Does it have to be grams? Can it be ml? Can it be something else? If you're thinking that, right on track. Have you checked out the part one of this video where we talk about weight by weight percentage, volume by volume percentage, and weight by volume percentage? You could do this same exercise and change gram to say ml in ml which would then make it v by v i'm writing at the bottom of the screen or i could also make it you know something else which is this term right here w by v so all of it figures right so i can do parts per million in all of these three terms example of 6.7 parts per million saying that 6.7 grams of a solute exists in six in, in a million grams of solution and interestingly, sometimes you'll see, you'll interchangeably use solution and solvent because there is so much of it that it doesn't matter if you're doing solution or solvent. Only if you're dealing with trace quantities. If you have a large number and you're just doing it as an exercise to change units, then make sure that the definition stays constant. Now, looks like this video is all about definitions and you're absolutely right. One more small trick not a trick really but just something to kind of related to this w by w v by v and v w by v you remember here we spoke about percent and we multiply with 100 here we're talking about per million so technically we should multiply with billion yeah that's about that's exactly what we're doing right so if you take the mass of solute in grams and the mass of the solution in grams and multiply that into 10 past 6 that's the same as ppm You'll see this definition more in textbooks than what I told you before. Just a couple of slides back. That was my take on this definition. That makes it easy for you to solve questions. But in textbooks, you have this. Make sure you understand both of these. They mean the same thing, right? And I've walked you through it. But in case it didn't make sense, just rewind a bit and watch this part again. Anyway, so to have one uniform definition, this is the one you're going to see the most, is Parts of a component divided by total parts of all components into 10 power 6. It's the same thing as before, right? If I make the generalized form, then it can go to weight by weight, go to V by V, or it can go to W by V. Cool? That was it about all of these awesome terms. Mole fraction, molarity with the R, molality with the L, and parts per billion. And here you go. Quickly writing everything we've done so far. Please check out some questions about this, hey, we'll solve some questions. Why don't you check that video out next?